Welcome to worship with the community of St. Mark's Lutheran Church by the Narrows. On this Sunday, as we celebrate Earth Sunday in the season of creation, we find ourselves here at the Mount St. Helens National Monument. Behind me, you can't quite see, but the mountain stands tall, shrouded by clouds. This is a place that we learn and listen to the voice of creation speaking to us. Paired with the gospel of the Good Samaritan, this land, uh, this earth speaks to us in ways that ask us to care for our neighbor, caring for um, that tangible neighbor and also the earth as our neighbor. Uh, as we begin worship this morning, I invite you to sing our opening song. shall change though the mountains tremble though the waters rage you God are here though the nations war though the peoples battle though the empire falters we will not though the earth shall change though the mountains tremble though the waters rage you god are here though the nations war though the peoples battle though the empire falters Shall change. Oh, the earth shall change, though the mountains tremble, though the waters rage, you, God, are here. Though the nations war, though the peoples battle, shall change, though the mountains tremble, though the waters rage, you, God, are here, though the nations war, though the peoples battle, though the empire falters. grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We pray together. God of mountains and God of valleys, you call us to love you, to love one another, and to love ourselves. Ground us in this love as we care for creation. With joy and thanksgiving, we pray. Amen. A reading from Isaiah chapter 54. Sing, O barren one who did not bear. Burst into song and shout, you who have not been in labor. For the children of the desolate woman will be more than the children of her that is married, says the Lord. Enlarge the side of your tent and let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Do not hold back, lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you will spread out to the right and to the left and your descendants will possess the nations and will settle the desolate towns. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed. Do not be discouraged, for you will not suffer disgrace. For you will forget the shame of your youth and the disgrace of your widowhood you will remember no more. For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your redeemer. The God of the whole earth he is called. For the Lord has called you like a wife forsaken and grieved in spirit, like the wife of a man's youth when she is cast off, says your God. For a brief moment, I abandoned you, but with great compassion, I will gather you. In overflowing wrath for a moment, 
I hid my face from you. But with everlasting love, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. This is like the days of Noah to me. Just as I swore that the waters of Noah would never again go over the earth, so I have sworn that I will not be angry with you and will not rebuke you. For the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you, and my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born, from age to age you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, Turn back, O children of earth, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream. They fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter. An expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to them, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to prove himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him and took off, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came from the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came upon him, and when he saw him, he was moved with compassion. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, treating him with oil and wine. Then he took him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you what more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said to him, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. A few weeks ago on a backpacking trip, my friends and I were hiking part of the PCT, the Pacific Crest Trail that runs or ambles from south to north along the east side of Mount Adams, and it was incredible to stand so close to a mountain I had only seen in the distance from Mount Rainier. And as we hiked up to meet the PCT, Mount Rainier came into view, and we were so captivated by that mountain. But as we continued to hike, another mountain was unveiled then to the left of Rainier, the big cut of the eruption in view. It held us in awe from the moment we first saw it and then kept us there uh, in our imagination as the day passed into evening, and we watched the sun go down over the horizon, over Mount St. Helens, the last flashes of the light over the clouds appearing at sunset. And I was very much aware we were standing in view of three massive volcanoes of the Cascade Mountains in Southern Washington, giants in their own right. Each one contains such beauty and potential for eruption potential to create new earth, to change the landscape in unrecognizable ways, to change lakes and blow down trees and change the courses of river with ash. It's amazing to be here on Mount St. Helens today to witness the unveiling of a mountain from behind the clouds, the crater and lava dome beginning to show through in much anticipation and hope that we could finally see the mountain. And it is incredible too, to witness a whole mountain changed and creation recovering all around us, plant life taking root and growing. We are witnesses today to the way life emerges in the aftermath of incredible force and destruction and find renewal in life that breaks forth from new earth. So here we stand also with a story in our Christian scripture so familiar and dear to us with a commandment to love God, to love our neighbor and to love ourselves. 
in my mind and heart and soul, and I think in your minds and hearts and souls, our love of the earth is part of that commandment to love God and to love our neighbor and to love ourselves and our sacred calling as followers of Jesus. A friend of mine took the question, who is my neighbor in this parable and asked again, what if the neighbor in the story is a mountain? And she had ties along the East Coast. So the mountain she had in mind was a coal mining one in Appalachia. And for me, she held up a reminder of all the ways that we fail to love our neighbor, where we do things that harm one another and harm the earth and cause a severe and, uh, and tremendous impact in our lives. And the example of the coal mining Appalachian Mountain, it includes an environmental impact of the coal mining town on the people, the dust in the lungs of the miners, the environmental devastation of coal mining and the mountain herself, pollution and contribution to climate change and the burning of coal. And also the calling to love the mountain, to love the earth, also lifted up for her different ways to care for those mountains in Appalachia, envisioning new ways of human beings making a living in that part of our country, and different energy sources and healing of bodies in the land. All of these flow out from the love of God we know through Jesus. And as we consider our neighbor in this part of the world, the volcanic mountains too, we hold Mount St. Helens as our neighbor with great and devastating power and hope and renewal of life in the earth. The very earth of the mountain herself has the power to shape and reshape the landscape of this whole part of our world. We witness the healing and life-giving ways the earth changes and continues to give life. Mount St. Helens is a dynamic neighbor, one that has a huge impact on our lives, one that opens up a question of what it means to see and care and help bring forth life in this world. Many of you have memories of the mountain erupting, of being woken up in your bed on a Sunday morning when the mountain erupted and knocked out of your bed while sleeping. And in Bible study this week, someone shared a story of the shock and frustration that church was actually canceled on a Sunday morning. Some of you might have also been able to see the columns erupting from this part of the Puget Sound and feared for, one's, for loved one's safety in the vicinity of the mountain. Or you might remember how the sky darkened and the ash made day into night and fell on crops throughout eastern Washington. I've heard even across the country and across the world, a haze was present in the air and on the horizon from the eruption of this mountain. So we live in the neighborhood of active volcanoes. And while that sends a shiver down my spine, I'm also aware of the dependent and inextricable place and we have in the balance of this created world. We live within an ecosystem that has shaped and altered us. And we know too the ways our lives impact the earth in great and devastating ways, and the ways that give hope and renewal of life. We see the deep need of the world and see our ways of ignoring what we need to do, how we can care, and just passing through um, impacts that uh, people with affluent lifestyles have um, and the impact this has in a disproportionate uh, way on climate change. We see the impact of human development, deforestation, pollution. All of this is part of our, our way of interacting with the environment in negative ways. And then there are hands that are active in projects that bring hope, ways that care for the earth with sustainable energy and tree planting and so many more. I know you can name those projects as well. For me in this whole season of creation, one of the questions we live into is what if we are to love God's creation as our neighbor, as we love ourselves? What if the climate of the earth is our neighbor, something worthy of stopping and noticing and caring for in all the ways that change our life and change the course of what we might be moving towards? And I know for some of us, this feels impossibly big, like we are changing the world but our own lives depend on the well-being of the earth. It is the ground and source of our being. And this friend who went on to write more about this question of who is our neighbor, has said, it is the responsibility of Christians and of all people to respond to environmental challenges before us with neighborliness that breaks down the human-centered um, way of reading and 
exploring our Christian scriptures. In our interpretation of the story, we must be on the side of life. In a closed system, while our, all energy and matter is recycled in a constant and never-ending flow, we must think about how best to enliven all creatures, human and non-human, God's creation, the sacred ground of being that is our plant and our physicality, the ground and source of our being, has an inherent worth that is groaning and crying out. If God is on the side of helping us gain life, physically or spiritually, we must reimagine those narratives with interpretations that speak to the ecology of our world. So in this place where life is emerging, where human hands are present in the care, we give thanks to God and continue this great Christian calling. Amen. Is the one who wrote my name upon them, the one who filled the oceans of the deep, is the one who poured the spirit inside. You know 
Because you know All throughout our walk along these ridges surrounding Mount St. Helens today, we have been marveling at the new growth that is coming forth from all that the mountain left here after the eruption and after the devastation that was so evident still around us, seeing trees that have been still um, lying, waiting to be part of the regeneration of the soil. And then to see all of these new trees and bushes and flowers coming up out of the soil is such a sign of hope and it's a reminder of God's renewal of life. It's a way of remembering too God's renewal of our lives through grace and forgiveness and love. And we take some moments now to remember what it is that we bring before God for renewal in our life, what we ask God to forgive and to bless. In the mercy of God who renews our lives and all of creation, we have the forgiveness of all our sin. And that is the promise of the gospel that I declare for all of us today in the name of God, our Creator, Christ, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join now in prayers of the people, and after each petition, your response is, Your mercy is great. God of new life throughout the earth, we give you thanks for the astounding renewal of creation that flows from your creative power. We praise you for ferns pushing up through ash, for meadows bursting with hope, for forests emerging from barren hillsides. Teach us to trust this power of renewal in our own lives, that we might put all our hope in you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Consoling God, make your presence known today in all places of the world where life is threatened and destroyed by chaotic forces within nature. We pray especially today for the people of Puerto Rico and surrounding islands who have lost loved ones in the recent hurricane. Strengthen and uphold them along with all of those who work day and night to bring them healing and hope. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Sovereign God, you call us to be good stewards of this earthly home. Strengthen us to care for your creation. Forgive us when, through our greed and indifference, we abuse its beauty and damage its potential. Empower us through your Spirit to so nurture and love the world that all creation sings to your glory. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, forgive us when we forget that we belong to each other and to this earth. You call us to be still, to hear the whisper of our sister wind, to feel the radiance of our brother sun, to be nourished by our mother earth. Renew us in your healing love. Inspire us to water the earth and to nurture one another so that all may flourish together as one family. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God, our refuge and strength, our present help in time of trouble. Be present with all who look to you today for healing in body or mind or spirit. We pray especially for Randy Holland, for John and Dorothy Peterson, and for these others we name now before you, either silently or aloud. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Into your hands we place ourselves, our minds to know you, our hearts to love you, our wills to serve you, for we are yours, O God. Take us and fashion us after your image. Let your comfort strengthen, your grace renew, and your love restore. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. In the beauty of creation and communion with all that God has brought forth, we now confess our faith together with these words from the Iona Abbey worship book. We believe in the creator who gave birth to the universe, set solar systems dancing in space, shaped molecules and mountains, and conceived beauty beyond our imagining. We believe in Jesus born in obscurity in an occupied land, a human being vulnerable to hunger, thirst, persecution, and grief. 
He understood the power of love and confronted the powers of evil, spoke the truth with courage and clarity, forgave his enemies, and changed lives. In his living, dying, and rising again, he showed love strong enough to save the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit who stains, comforts, and empowers us, opens the scriptures, opens our minds, and illuminates earth's darkness. Amen. The peace of God be with all of you. You're welcome to share God's peace now with anyone who may be gathered with you and in other ways with those who perhaps are online or in other communities as we remember that we are all one together in the body of Christ. I have been so inspired today again by all of the ways in which God is a part of the renewal happening in the earth. I'm thankful for all of the ways that we as a congregation are invited into the work that God's doing in the world, renewing life in our neighborhood, in our congregation, and in the world around us. And for all of the ways in which you participate in that, I'm also grateful. Many of the ways that we um, are a part of this mission include our offering gifts, and I'm thankful for the way in which those gifts put together are able to then accomplish so many good things uh, in God's name. So if you'd like to be a part of that through your own gifts of thanksgiving, there is a tab on our website that says give, and if you click on that, it'll give you opportunities along with online giving. And again, thank you for all of the ways that you are in mission together with us. Praise is yours, holy God. All that is good in us and in creation, all that we have, all that we know, and all that is yet to be comes from your care and is rooted and grounded in your love. The life of the world and all of its people, nature and human skill celebrate you as the first mover and the final destiny. To the great hymn of all creation in earth, sea and sky, we join now our own praise. And as one with your people on earth, north and south, east and west, with all creatures, we sing the song of your eternal greatness. Remembering that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And after he had given thanks, he blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying to them, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. And do this to remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he offered it to them, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. In this season of creation, we pray together a contemporary version of the Lord's Prayer from the New Zealand prayer book, especially coming from the Maori and Pacific Island Christians. Eternal spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and that shall be, Father and mother of us all, loving God in whom is heaven. The hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. If you have bread and wine or grape juice in your place of worship, you're welcome to receive those gifts now. And if you are with others, to share them, remembering that we are a part of the body of Christ, and if you are worshiping alone, remember too that you are a part of this community that gathers around the table today. And when we receive these gifts, we remember the words, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you.
Generous and faithful God, you have fed us at your table. May the nourishment we have received enable us to enrich the lives of others wherever we may go from here. Whether the future be dark or bright, the road be smooth or rough, whether our cares be light or heavy, our song be strong or weak, keep our hearts warm and our hands open, our lives ever embracing and ever embraced by your love. Amen. As we move into a time of parish life announcements, there are a few things to uh, keep on your calendar and keep on your mind as we look forward to the week ahead. First is that on Wednesday night, we'll be having our dinner starting at 5 p.m. We'll then have midweek renewal starting at 6.15 p.m. with Ingelori Lisher, our deacon, leading a, a book study on Kate Bowler's book, No Cure for Being Human. At 7.30, we'll have our evening prayer together in the parish commons, so we invite you to come then. Uh, just looking ahead to October as well, on October 1st, you're invited to a Habitat for Humanity event for St. Mark's uh, called Build on Faith. For information on how to register, I invite you to check out our bridge, our email newsletter, by going to our website and clicking on the tab that says bridge. Um, you may also find a way to subscribe um, by going to the bridge, and uh, we look forward for the ways in which we continue to connect with you throughout these coming weeks and months and receive this blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of God, our Creator, Christ, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our sending song.
Now go in peace to love and serve God and your neighbor. And if the opportunity arises, go jump off. No, wait, actually, go sit down, take a deep breath, and crack open a cold one with a good friend. Cheers. Cheers.